Take it away, Jason. Thanks a lot, hi everyone. So uh, I'm going to present you, well, how to build the Optimal <laughs> Research Repository. And to understand that, let's start with the why. So most of the time, <coughs> we do some fantastic research and we see that we are not answering any problem, which is the why we do research. So the initial problem is, well, if we don't know for who we are designing and why we are designing, well, why should we begin then? So we will start with the state of user research. So why it's not so easy to implement? Well, first we have operational barrier. So this means that sometimes we are not able to capture like the right data. We are not able to capture the right insights. And this means that, well, when you will use these insights into a project, they won't have any sense. We have also some systematic barriers that are more linked to, um, well, the consideration of individuals, which means that I want to target a specific user group, and so sometimes it means that some users might be left apart. There are also some technical barriers. Of course, there are many tools today on the market that allow to do user research, but sometimes there is a learning curve, or, well, just participants struggle to use the tools. Like online, you cannot estimate that everybody is able to use a prototype or stuff like this. And finally, there is a last type, which is a functional one, which means that, um, well, participants don't often get why they should participate in your study. This is simply due to the fact that user research today is beyond the topic, I would say, and, uh, well, participants are not aware of. So, just today, most of the research is evaluative, which means that we are testing, well, wireframes, products that are already existing. This means that, well, we all have done an A-B test, a concept test, or stuff like this, and we are doing some increments and some well, integrating feedbacks from users. But have you heard of generative research? So generative research is about identifying new opportunities and allow like massive innovation and big improvements. So the idea is that we focus on generating new ideas from insight without a proper objective or product to test. So the idea is to transition more from evaluative to generative research to uncover more opportunities and also be more user-centric in design because we have the data from the before and not from the after the product. So where to start to build an actionable research repository? We, we have one like this after each transition. No? So <laughs> here is an example of, well, you, you go into the field, you come back and you see Everything went off, your product is burning, and you've got 37 messages on Slack. So, first, how to start, I would say. So, as we have a design system, we've got an approach that is the research system. The idea is to work on four pillars that are the acquisition, the storage, the scale, and the share. So, this framework will allow to build like concrete research and position it as an actionable element for innovation. So let's go to the acquisition phase. So as you can understand, the acquisition is how I'm going to get some information and findings about my users. So first of all, define the question. Why are we doing some research? Then find some methods. Well, are we more on the exploration phase? Are we more on the testing phase? Then participants, of course. Define some segments, some user group you want to, to test with, and have a plan and a roadmap. Today, well, most of the time on research, we do the research, we stop there, and we are happy with it. The problem is, if we don't have a roadmap that defines what are the stages of my research, well, it will be left uh, aside, and you will, you will not consider it. For the storage, we have, well, first of all, a naming convention. If you've got 20 files that are named differently, it would be pretty hard to locate and identify. And of course, use a database that is centralized. You want to have all your insights in one single place, that lives through the time. The idea is also to use some categorization uh, information and to do some cleanups. We, we have some repositories that are most of the time containing all the research of the company, but you cannot consider insights that have been created two years ago because of course users evolve and you must clean and adapt your repository. Once you have all that, how do you scale this? So to scale the repository, you've got, well, multiple aspects. First of all is update your research plan. So you've got a plan, you've got some insights, and you want to update what you are going to do 
to make sure that the insights you are using are valuable for the next one. And then, of course, it's about the team. So defining some roles and saying, like, who will analyze some analytics? Who will convert findings into insights? And all this kind of stuff. And the idea is to establish a communication plan, which leads me to the fourth pillar about sharing. So sharing is super important because today stakeholders are not super fancy about research and they tend to say, well, if we can skip it, it's best because we save some money. So how to share it? It's like to structure a presentation and present some key insights. You don't need to present all the findings uh, from a research and the idea is really to communicate clearly and concisely. Then, of course, the idea is to uh, well, use storytelling. You don't want to say, okay, we see that our user did this, 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 and in the end, you don't know how to actionate this. So this is for the sharing aspect. So now, how do we create actionable research? So here's a new one. Research bias everywhere, which is how it works today. When we start some research, we already have a statement where we say, okay, we know that we want to search more on this aspect, or we have this concept, we want to test it. So we already have a bias that is existing, and the research repository is a living model. So the idea of the repository is not only to just like store elements, but it's really like to make it live. So you want to organize and store user data, but also mark some improvements on your product experience. So, I would like to introduce the atomic research model. So this model uh, has been developed by Daniel Pitcock and he developed an approach that allows to run experiments, which are like small research path that allows to find some snippets of research, I would say. So basically it's the observation. So we saw that the user did that. We saw during this test that we observed this pattern. And the idea is that you can convert that into facts. So facts are, well, like, are taking their knowledge from the experiments. And from there, you will have findings. And findings should be con converted into insights. So an insight should contain the context, the cause, and the effect. So this is normally what you should present. And then you can identify opportunities. So knowing all that, you know the audience, and you can estimate to benefit. So you can estimate an opportunity. And the idea is really to convert the insight as an actionable opportunity for the project innovation. So I'm going to present you the atomic nugget. So when I talk about nuggets, of course, you've got this one. But your product manager is more focusing on this one. <laughs> In real life, the atomic nugget is a user insight that, is, that has been broken down into smaller pieces that can be used on its own, I would say. And the idea is to store that in the insight repository and put it as a key element in the knowledge management strategy. So the atomic nugget, is, it consists of an observation, an evidence, and some tags. So of course, the taxonomy is something that is super important. So for example, this could be an atomic nugget. We've got an observation, support article not difficult to find with the current navigation, We've got an evidence that is coming from the experiments we conducted, and we've got some tags. So with that, we should be able to position an innovation on a specific segment of the product and what should be done. Taxonomies are super important because they will help you organize and sort your research repository. You don't want to have a repository that is only marked with a product area. Okay, we've got some insights on the contact form, then what next? So here are some examples of taxonomies that could be used for the categorization of research. And then you can have also some properties that are more related to the participant side, the researcher, and how the company is working within the research. So findings and insights. This is the topic, I would say. Um, a finding is a piece of information that comes from the examination where an insight is a clear and deep understanding of the problem. So if we take this example, quite often we present this kind of element as an insight. In fact, this is a finding because the insight provides a justification of we observe these two elements so we can mix it, understand it, and provide a clear insight for this. 
So insights are more complex and they, well, they are the result of the analysis combined with the personal knowledge. So as a UX researcher, you have some knowledge about the company and the idea is to mix that with the findings to provide some insights. So I would like to give you an example of the Polaris uh, UX Nuggets. Um, you can find it on Airtable and basically it provides the, well, it's a nice Airtable, no? but you have some nuggets and how they converted it into insights. So if you want to take a look, uh, this is quite an interesting one. So now time for action. How do you actionate insight into innovation? So first link insight to product objectives. You don't want to push like 50 insights and say, okay, product manager here, here is your job and then just use them to make some innovation. The idea is really to answer a research question that has been defined in the first step of the HR system. And then you can identify the key highlight and you can, of course, point out how this insight will answer a pain point, a product improvement or a product feature. So what you want to do is to increase accuracy of innovation by combining qualitative insights and quantitative insights. Basically, you can detect the pattern of a user, for example, and the pain point by confronting, for example, a drop in a quantitative study and, of course, a blocking point in a qualitative analysis. This will, of course, define areas of improvement. How would you communicate insight efficiently? So the idea is to simplify. You don't want to have an insight that will have numerous parameters and you want to keep it simple. And of course, highlight some key insights. You don't want to have stakeholders reading full reports. You want to have something that is precise and actionable. So make your repository addictive. The idea is that users, stakeholders, product managers, and even management levels should know how to access the repository. And the idea is of course to promote it and to monitor the usage. So for example, if you see that a category is not observed at all, you should either change the approach or communicate better on this aspect. So the idea, of course, is to promote collaboration and knowledge sharing. So, continuous research. I've got it, so. <laughs> okay. So this is something that we hear most of the time is about, yeah, okay, user research, yeah, it's nice, but if we could skip it, like, it would be great. Well, we've got the fact that Amazon, well, it's Amazon, okay, but releases new production code every 11.6 seconds, which means that could we do that with research? The idea should be yes. But what is continuous user research? So it's a fast research that is open-ended in nature. So it means that you don't have any specific topic you are searching on, but the idea is that you can fuel something with continuous research. So for example, you can use product analytics, feedback surveys, and many methods that you can use, but the idea is always to have something that fuels the repository and make sure that you can combine multiple methodologies to confirm or uh, like qualify an insight even better, I would say. So, if we like wrap up on what has been said. So we've got to define the why, which is basically identify the state of research, which is consider the barriers that are existing and have a view on, is my company more on the evaluative side or more on the generative side? Then you have, of course, the four pillars. How I'm gonna get these findings? I will store the insights, I will scale the practices of research across my company, and I will share how I will share this with stakeholders and other members of my organization. Then we've got, of course, build the repository, which is about what is my strategy to build these nuggets, how, well, what taxonomies and properties I'm going to create to fit with what we are searching uh, in my company, of course, confront different types of research because you can't focus on only one method. You need to explore, test, ideate, and all this stuff. And then connect other sources and, chan and channels uh, to make sure that continuous research can be enabled. 
And finally, the last one is make it addictive. So communicate, share, and feed the research. So never present findings raw, I would say. Transform findings into insights for a better adoption. Then justify these insights by saying these insights are answering these questions. And then, of course, share with stakeholders and manage it as a really like your own product and not like a random add-on on a project. Thank you. I love that that was like a master class. I feel like I need to study that like a textbook. <laughs> like, I need some worksheets to practice insights versus uh, findings. findings, yes. <laughs> Um, great, yeah, uh, I, I have a quick question to start. So um, in terms of disseminating this, I saw this really sexy air table. Um, do you have any more tips for just like making, and, and I love the, the fact, uh, the way that you equate it like a product, like you have to advocate for your own product, but like how do, you, how do you get good at that? Like what are some tactics for like making sure that you're like constantly talking to people and they're actually listening and using it? So starting the repository is not like the, easier thing of course but the idea is to start small like you want to present like more and more features you would improve well you put you would implement the, when i talk about maintaining as a product is well start with the mvp so define your research questions like we are answering this aspect on the service of the user we are uh, answering this aspect of the product and already present that saying that the research will feed these questions and then other stakeholders like is that something that we are interesting in searching for. Then you can start with, okay, now that we've got our questions, how are we going to answer <coughs> these questions? So map some methodologies. I'm going to run some A-B test. I'm going to run some interviews and all that. And like, as long as you start populating your product, then communicate it directly with upper levels, I would say. So the idea is just to make sure that you bring confidence to the repository. Mm -hmm. And of course, they will more and more say, okay, then on this aspect, we should explore a bit more. And then you, can, you have your trigger for the next step. Okay. So I would say start small, list the questions that you want to answer with, res with research, define methodologies, and then start uh, actioning your research. Yeah. But if I you want to see. see, like, where is he? Like the nugget one. Yeah. Tomer Sharon. Mm -hmm. um, so he's quite uh, a famous UX researcher, but you, you can find super articles about how to implement user research and how to start. And uh, well, there are a ton on Medium, so if you want to check. Tomer uh, Sharon. Okay, great. Questions from the audience? Got to be some researchers in here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, is there. Type of organization or team that you would recommend this for and you would love to recommend this for? And for example, specifically, would you recommend the repository for agency? So for me, agencies should use a repository. Why? Because, well, agencies tend to have smaller projects sometimes that are actionable directly, I would say. And to avoid having this incremental and, like I would say, increase the offer of the agency is to say, okay, what should be, like we have, we've identified these patterns in the, in the user, in the user, well, in the use of the service or the product. So how could we evolve this to the next step? So the agency takes a benefit from there. Uh, but the idea is really that large organization, you know, they're like big boats and they need to have this to fuel the innovation. But on an agency level, you would have like a more, I would say, innovative approach because you have well, normally more agile, and you should be like incrementing big innovation into a project because it's part of a customer one, where large groups are making small increments because, of course, the impact is higher, I would say, in terms of user experience. Would you recommend this for the repository as an agency working for different clients? Yeah. Would you still say we keep those insights in yeah. this particular product to a very different product? And then yeah. And of course, you can justify your work by saying, OK, so we did an exploration for some users on this aspect of the product. So instead of considering this approach, it might be interesting to explore more this one. And so then you can collaborate more in an efficient way with the, with the client saying like, hey, just to be sure, like we explored this aspect. Here is the insight report. Read it and, and we discuss it. You see?
Yeah, it seems like if you did have an agency-wide repository, it could be interesting to share benchmarks with you know similar types of clients. But then again, I wouldn't want that to ever replace bespoke research for a client. So, yeah. But that's an interesting th thing to think about. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like white labels and whatnot. But yeah, I mean, if it's just benchmarking, then yeah, it's an interesting thing to think about. But for example, you can provide test results or mm -hmm. like confronting analytics and usability tests or mm -hmm. stuff like this and say like, see, we've, we've built a product, you paid for this product and we show you that at some point we have some improvements on this area or user liked this aspect. So mm -hmm. I think that sharing research results with clients, especially for an agency, is about building more trust, you mm -hmm. know, uh, with, with the client because you, you make okay. sure that when you release the product, like it's answering real user needs and it's fitting with a user, proper user experience. So, uh, that's a good point. Any other questions? Yeah, no more. Is there any tools that you recommend that make this repository easier to build? Like we have Figma for a design system or Storybook for design system on the other side of design system? So, to be completely honest, I'm going to be very biased for this one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Because like we are building a tool that reflects the whole process, but I'm not here for the marketing stuff, I promise. <laughs> um, but well, you've got tools today uh, that you've got Dovetail, you've got user Zoom, you've got plenty of tools that are doing parts of the, of the roadmap. Um, it depends on the need, I would say. Like if you need to store some nuggets with a super system of filtering and all that, Airtable should be the best system. If you want to conduct some interviews, some concept testing and stuff like this, you've got solution like uh, look back, uh, user zoom and all that. And if you want to do both, you can use music. <laughs> Product placement. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. So you're working on a tool that does this. Yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. So the, the idea of usage is really to provide foundation to insights. Mm -hmm. So what we see today is when you create a research repository with some insights, they will die at some point because like you won't maintain the repository and it won't be fueled automatically. So what we thought is if you can run your workshops directly inside our tool and qualify insights from these workshops automatically, would we solve a pain point that the repository at some point will die? Mm -hmm. So this is what we are working on. We make sure that insights stay up to date and you don't lose an insight like that was created three years ago for uh, next week's project. We believe that is possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the, well, we, we did some field study on, on this, and uh, the big problem with platforms that well, just store the research is that at some point it won't be up to date, and to find where it's coming from, external source or wherever it's coming from, it's super hard. Like, and most of the time it re it requires so much effort that you would just say, okay, well, it looks okay. Let's consider it, or let's not consider it. But the problem is, like these platforms are like big buses that you can store everything inside. Like just like a, you know, like you've got a closet at home that has pretty much anything in your house. And the idea here is really to focus on how can an insight come from a finding that comes from a workshop session or a test or a usability testing or stuff like this. So. Here, what we do on our side is like, we've got all these exercises, which are from concept tests, interviews, card sortings, plenty methods. And then from there, we'll qualify findings directly from these sessions. So you don't have a, a Teams, a Google Meet, uh, I don't know what platform we can imagine, that are fueling your company system, and then you are replicating it into Dovetail, you see? So we do the whole process basically in the same tool, 
to allow that every source that you will use in a project is coming from an actual exercise conducting with users. So That's you can cool. map a user with an insight and it fits with a project innovation. Sounds cool. Yeah, post yeah. that in Slack. I'd like to check it For out. For sure, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we, like, we launched uh, one month ago, so uh, <laughs> like it was intense times, but uh, no, it's, it's going great so far. So uh, if you want to be a beta tester, just say hi, and I'll be happy to share with you an account uh, for that. All right. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. It was really fascinating, and hope to learn more about it. So, um, yeah. Great, great <laughs>